Hello, friends, and welcome to Emerald's Table. Do you know what Butch's favorite cuts are to take home? Well, today we're going to find out. Plus, I'm going to see her tri-tip steak with Brene sauce, and then we're going to grill a flat iron steak and add it to an avocado, tomato, and red onion salad. You don't want to miss this, so come and join me at my table. Now, the next time you taste a delicious steak, remember there's a butcher behind your great cut of meat. Now, when a chef is looking to make a great meal, he or she looks no further than his favorite butcher to provide the best of the best. And speaking of the best, I have five of the best butchers right here at my table. So please join me in welcoming Jay, Ryan, Jessica, Brian, and Shiloh. Welcome, guys. So you're all from Fleischer's up in upstate New York. So your husband, Joshua, who's mine in the store, started this thing how many years ago? Seven. Seven years ago. So tell people at home, Jessica, and you guys chime in, what, what, what's it like at Fleischer's? How do you explain that to people at home? Um, well, we are a nose-to-tail butcher. So we literally get in whole animals, which is fairly unusual these days. And so we spend our days cutting um, whole animals up into what you would see in the case. Literally steaks, chops, roasts. We do our own grind daily. Um, that's also unusual these days. So if people are in the Kingston, New York area, they can stop by and there's a retail bot that they can, they can do this as well? Correct. And if I don't, if I'm not by Kingston, can I, can I email you? Can I? We don't. Can, we don't do mail order, actually. We believe that people should find their own local sources for yep. sustainable meat. So uh, we suggest that people go to farmers markets, yep. their own local butcher shops, farmers in their in their areas. Um, but we will be opening up a shop in Brooklyn very soon, which is a lovely thing. Awesome. Um, and they can always stop by the shop in Kingston. Brooklyn's happening right now. It is very it's really much so. happening. All right. So let me ask you this: You guys, to my knowledge, specialize in grass-fed and organic products. Correct. So there's no hormones, there's none of those pesticides, none of that junk in what you guys do. That's correct. All right, what we have done, folks, is before our five butchers came to our table, we said, tell us your favorite cuts and why. So we're going to start with Jay. Jay, your favorite cuts right here. This is you. Tell us about it. Um, I picked oxtail and tongue. Uh, I really like the off cuts. Uh, they're really affordable, and they basically cook themselves in a braising liquid. You put it in the oven, and you forget about it, and three hours later, you have a meal. Two of my favorites. Mm -hmm. as, but as you said, have to be cooked for some time, mm -hmm. braised, but very inexpensive cuts. All right, we're going to start with Ryan. Ryan, what did you choose? This is the sirloin flap. This is off the loin of the animal. It's basically the oblique, and it's, it's great cooked as a steak. And it's very similar in, to a hanger steak in that it's got a great big kind of oafly, meaty flavor and a great mouthfeel. But not to be confused, if people were to look at this right now at home, not to be confused at all with a flank steak. No, it actually comes, it's underneath the flank steak, same, similar part of the animal. It's not really similar in texture or flavor to a flank steak. Jessica, now the owner and proprietor. What have you chose? Oh, I chose a skirt steak, and actually the skirt steak is what started Fleischer's. Um, before any other steak, we went to a farmer that we started dealing with originally, and that was the steak that he gave us to try, um, and that's exactly why it's my favorite. It was the first steak that I ever had after I was a vegetarian, um, and it was, the reason I like it is it's got a huge beefy taste, as well as I'm a mom, and it's a really, really quick cook, so. Fantastic. Do you marinate it? Is that, is um, that a good Sometimes I do. It, it's a great steak for marinades. All right, Brian, tell us about your cut. Uh, I picked a flat iron. It's a really quick cooking steak. And there's no fat on there. Very lean. Um, you tenderize it up. Um, it's not a naturally tender cut, so we use a jacquard, tenderize it, uh -huh. break some of those fibers down, and it just cooks really quick in a pan. So if people don't have a jacquard, which I have, which is sort of this little box, if you will, folks, when you press it, these blades come down. They're fantastic. They're inexpensive. You could probably use sort of like an ice pick or maybe yeah. even a, a strong fork, fork right, if people at home don't have one of those. All right, Shiloh, tell us. <laughs> the big boy right here. What did you got? What did you got? I got the, uh, the prime rib or the ribeye here. Uh, 
I guess you can tell the difference when you look at the others there. It's got a little more fat on it. Yeah. It's, it's the fatty one. The marble in there, it cooks up nice. And uh, another thing I like it, it's, it's like a full meal. Yeah. You, know, you got the potatoes, the salad, all that. I just like the steak. Right you may there. be getting the full <laughs> meal today, let me tell you. I promise you. So it would be a prime rib. Right, right. Basically or, uh, untrimmed, if you will. Uh, so like a 109 cut if you were in yeah, the restaurant business, exactly, right? Yeah, exactly. And or the butcher business, and then you're just cutting it on the bone. Right. I used we used the bandsaw yesterday. We cut that flat, so then you got the steak right there. Your, your great, ribeye. great choices, guys. Now I'm going to use one of my favorites is a tri-tip. How would you guys describe where it comes from? I mean, it's it's kind of under the sirloin muscle, right? It's off the it's the bottom part of the loin. The bottom so part of the your loin. Flank cut of the animal. Right. It just kind of hangs right now, down there. Now, you can see that I have one here that's fresh. Look at the marble on that. And and you want to leave the fat on it when you're cooking this. And and this is great not only on the grill, uh, as we're gonna do it today, slow and low, but also you can sear this real quick and do it in the oven. This is what you guys do when it's dry aged. Anybody want to comment on that? Dry aging adds flavor and also um, it softens the muscle. That's why that's why the prime cuts are generally dry aged. It adds what we call an umami flavor, um, sort of a mushrooming, earthy, beefy I agree. flavor. I agree with um, that. So when you can get dry aged meat, it's really the thing to get. Now, Jessica, when people go, uh, if they're lucky enough to go to a, a great store, a butcher, yeah. they're going to pay a little bit more for dry aged. There's a reason for that. That's right. The reason is because basically you have to cut off so much of that dry aging. And you're shrinking it. And you're shrinking it. So you lose almost a quarter of that muscle. Okay, and this is it totally trimmed with no fat. I don't really prefer it this way. I like the fat myself. I think you guys would agree. Yeah. But I did want to show folks at home. You agree? I got Totally? It. I absolutely agree. Yeah, I, I think it's pretty I, obvious why it's called a Yeah, tip, right? exactly. But I wanted to show folks at home what that is. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take ours right here, right now. We're gonna sort of jacquard it a little bit. And we're gonna just use an ice pick or as, as Ryan said, you just could use a, you just use a fork. And that's gonna just tenderize the muscle a little bit. And now what we're gonna do is very, very quickly use some beautiful sea salt on both sides. And I like to just try to get as much of that in there. Fresh cracked pepper. And then on the fat side, rather than putting a whole bunch of oil and all that stuff, guys, on the grill, I got it now on medium-high heat. I'm going to now turn it to medium. As we said, a little slower, slow and low. Yeah. Now I'm going to put it on, fat side down. And we're just going to let that start cooking, 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 cooking. Internal temperature, guys, I'd say probably about 125 we want to take it off. Wouldn't you guys say that for like a medium-rare? Sure. Right? Yeah. Okay. Folks, a great sauce with steak is Bernays. Bernays is a compound sauce from a mother sauce called Hollandaise. There are five mother sauces in cooking. There's tomato, there's velouté, there's espagnol, which is brown, there's bechamel, and there's Hollandaise sauce, okay? Basically, Hollandaise, we got to get egg yolks, so we want to separate eggs real quick. You don't want the white. You need a clean, clean bowl. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we separate that. We're going to take our egg yolks. You can see I'm using a stainless steel bowl. Most television shows that you're going to see, they're going to have a glass bowl because they want people at home to see it and la, la, la. Well, you know what? On Emerald's table... This is a real show. And at home, I would use a stainless bowl. So we're going to begin to whisk this. And when we come back, I'm going to show you Bernay sauce and its great tri-tip steak. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hey, welcome back to Emerald's Table, where... The butchers from Fleischer's are here and specialize in grass-fed and organic meats. We're making uh, a tri-tip steak with Bernays sauce. You see how thick it's got now? We've added clarified butter, which is 
basically separated the milk pots from the solids. And then you just sort of whisk this in. And it's a little thick right now. Now we're gonna take that off. Now, hollandaise is the mother sauce. And there are five mother sauces. There's hollandaise, there's velouté, there's tomato, there's bechamel, and there's espagnol, which is basically the demi-glace part of it. Five mother sauces. From that, you can get compound sauces, which we're gonna make right now. Because we're gonna take peppercorns, shallot, and tarragon, either dry or fresh, put them in a saucepan, and basically, guys, what we're gonna do is slowly reduce that. We're gonna evaporate the vinegar that we're gonna add to that until it almost gets, gets about three quarters of the way evaporated. From that, what we're gonna do is strain that because of the peppercorns. So we have that nice liquid in there now. And then basically what we're gonna do is take fresh tarragon, lots of it, and add it to that. And this is now what's gonna be added to our hollandaise sauce, which now becomes a compound sauce that we're gonna serve with our steak. So we have our Brunei sauce. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our tri-tip. Let's get a temperature check on that, guys. I got a meat thermometer here. I'm Gonna insert it right in the middle. And I'm at about 125 right now. Perfect. I think it's perfect. Because what folks, what you wanna know at home is that you gotta allow it to rest for at least five to 10 minutes. What happens is that people, right away, as you guys know, they go right into it right away and start cutting it and the juices just go and then it's done. Let me tell you about the perfect French fries for a second, right? Our meat's resting, we have our Brunei sauce done. When you have good potatoes with a starch and you peel them and then you cut them into French fries. Now, I cut them and then I wanna blanch them. What a lot of people say, blanching? What are you blanching? <clears throat> this is blanching, which means that I did a fry them already at about 325 for six to eight minutes. So they're not completely done. Then what I do, guys, is after I blanch them, I put them back in the fryer at about 350 degrees for about three to four minutes. And then what happens is they get nice and golden brown. You see that? For the most perfect French fry. And when they come out of the oil, that's exactly when you want to salt them because that's when they're going to have the flavor. So you go raw, you blanch them for six to eight minutes. Then you put them back in for three to four minutes for the perfect French fry. Our meat's resting, our Brunei sauce is done, our French fries are frying, and when we come back, another delicious meal. Stay with us, we'll be right back. All right, so uh, welcome back, folks. Just serving a little steak here to Jay. All right, so you guys have got the beautiful meat, beautifully cooked, perfect French fries. So here's the Brunese, and here's my sauce. Thank you. I'd have a little of both. Enjoy. Actually, guys, you know what? If you want, you can always have a little of that as well. You guys big fans of a little sea salt right at the end? Yeah, uh, yes, absolutely. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we have a flat iron steak right here, and we're gonna tenderize it the same way as we did the tri-tip, either with a jacotta, a fork, or I'm having this ice or little pick right here that we're gonna jacotta. Again, salt, fresh ground pepper, and then we're gonna put it on the grill And then what I'm gonna do is just a tiny little bit of olive oil on this. And then I'm gonna season the other side because I don't like one-sided tasting food. How's the steak, guys? Awesome. Beautiful. Delicious. Cooked all right, you think? Perfect. Perfect. How about the fries? 
Delicious. Oh, you guys definitely oh. went for the Brunei sauce. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know what? They just, you know, a lot of people have just not served Brunei sauce. You know, at these steak places and all these things. They got all these fancy sauces now. You know, Marchand de Vin, you know. I mean, <laughs> what about just a good Brunei sauce or a good steak sauce, you know? Classic. It's a classic. Right, it's a classic. Exactly. Well, anyhow, okay, guys, the meat is on. The flat iron. Brian's favorite cut. Mm -hmm. Now what we're going to do is this. I have a marinade right here, guys, of some fresh oregano, thyme, garlic, bell pepper. I have two types, and onion. Now watch this, Brian. What we're going to do is we're going to take slowly and just sort of baste this flavoring on the flat iron. You see that? Just a little bit. It's kind of almost like a chimichurri. And I'm just, I want to save a lot of the guts of it because that's what I'm really going to use as part of the sauce later for this. Now, once it gets going and it's blazing up here, what we're going to do to serve this sort of like in the Argentine Brazilian way, is we're gonna serve a beautiful tomato salad, avocados, red onion, fresh parsley, blue cheese. We're gonna take a little bit of this marinade sauce and that's what we're gonna use for the dressing. When our steak is coming, it's rested, we're gonna slice it against the grain, as you guys told me, Yummy, huh, guys? I know, good. Classic. Perfect. And right, perfectly just salted. Around. Perfectly salted it, actually. It's great. Really? Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to overdo it, but I like right at the end, I love when you just add a little bit of that. Mm -hmm. Oh, Beautiful. just for that little. Mm, love that. Another perfect dish at Emerald's table. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Remember I told you guys earlier that it's important to let your meat rest? We uh, cooked this to about 125 degrees. By letting it rest as the juices sort of solidify again, instead of running all over the place, it's also going to go up in temperature. So it's probably going to be by the, you know, 130 plus by the time we cut it. You have any thoughts on that, um. Jessica? Well, I think that that's exactly what you're looking for. So that's a perfect medium, medium rare. And I love the fact that you're slicing the steak rather than actually serving whole portions on a plate. Um, we always suggest that at the shop because, well, there's three reasons. One is um, basically it's a beautiful presentation. You can often serve it over salad. Um, secondly, it allows people to take exactly how much they want. So it's kind of a way to portion control. Yes. Um, and third, it allows people to take what they want. So the end pieces, as you're slicing, I can see it, are always going to be a little bit more well done than, say, the middle, which is going to be closer to a rare, probably. Well, the other thing, too, what I like to do, which I'm going to show you in a second, is that I always like to keep one of them. Well, this is your cut, so. And that's. Thank you. Um, because what I like to do, guys, I have this beautiful tomato and avocado salad right here. And see, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sort of fan this out a little bit like this. And then now what I'm going to do is take this one and leave it whole so the juices don't run all out. And that's how I would like to serve it. Then what I do to just finish this is I just take, again, that marinade that we had, and I take the solid parts of it on the meat. And then the vinaigrette part of this... I just then sprinkle a little bit of this on the salad. And remember, food is meant to be shared, especially with friends like you. Enjoy. Guys, thanks so much for being here. Cheers. Thank you. Here's to you. Thank Cheers. you. To the butchers of the world.